How about sugar? How many of you saw my presentation at the Real Truth About Health on Sugar in the past? You think chicken was bad? <laughs> Get the sugar. <laughs> Numerous important findings show that cancer cells can readily metabolize fructose to increase proliferation. It is well established among the best scientists in the world today, the number one way to create cancer is from fruit sugar. I will repeat what I said to you. The number one research scientist in the world happens to be on cancer. He wrote the definitive book on cancer, Dom Dr. Thomas Seyfried. You can see him on the Hippocrates website, Every once in a while, I get the top minds, I bring them together, I do scientific conferences at Hippocrates, so I get to know these people, shake them down, see if they're real. And he's real. He's a Boston guy. And if you think I talk against things, he makes me look like a Boy Scout. I always say, tone it down, <laughs> tone it down. He rails against what they do with cancer patients, like I've never heard anyone rail. Thomas Seyfried. This has major significance for cancer patients given dietary fructose consumption, which indicates that efforts to reduce refined fructose intake or inhibit fructose mediation actions will disturb cancer growth. Now, where most of you get fructose is high fructose corn syrup, but you get it in mangoes, you can get it in bananas, organic, by the way, you get it in cherries, you get it in grapes, you get it in all that. So that's why nearly 40 years ago at Hippocrates, we took fruit out of the diet for anyone with cancer. And then we realized it's not only cancer, it's viruses, it's bacteria, it's mold, it's yeast, it's fungus. It is low blood sugar called hypoglycemia. It's a high blood sugar. And we were considered the nuts. Now we are not the nuts anymore because there's lots of nuts. Like Stanford, University of California, German Cancer Institute. You want me to keep going? That everyone is in the same course saying in the whole th same thing. Wow, fruit feeds all these diseases. Fruit sugar feeds these diseases. Well, but I heard Dr. Holistic Joe or Mary or Sally, and they said, eat fruits and vegetables and eat five servings a day. I know you can't get your head around it. You're still mourning the loss of chicken consumption. <laughs> Wake up, people. Are you real? Or are you pretending? That's my question. Are you real? Are you really trying to get healthy? Are you really? Or is this a hobby for you? You sit your ass here listening to all of us as a hobby and think this is unique and nice and then you go out and eat crap? Well, don't watch us. We're not interested in losers. We're interested in winners. We're interested in people standing up. If we don't stand up and change, if you can't do it for yourself and your family, how do you think we're going to survive as a human race? It's an impossibility. If those of you who perceive yourself as knowledgeable and perceive yourself as enlightened, and perceive yourself as conscious, are totally sleeping, and you just want to do moderate things, well, then you're part of the problem. Fruit, its juices, and all other forms of sugar cause inflammation throughout the body, leading to the development and metastases of every form of cancer. These findings were published in October 2011, Journal of Nutrition and Metabolism. Researchers, Clement, look at that, he robbed my name and put a K in front of it. <laughs> and Cameron further stated, cancers are so sensitive to sugar supply that cutting the supply will suppress the disease. Now, doctors are saying, Brian's wrong, Brian's wrong. I hear you out there. I listen closely. You're wrong. What do you think a PET scan is? The most impressive scan we've ever used on cancer in the history of humanity. We inject sugar in. And a colleague of mine did it at Stanford with fruit sugar. And by the way, when the cancer eats it, it lights up. And the PET scan can now see not only where the epicenter of the cancer is, but where the cancer is going to move to, metastasize to. This is a done deal, people. I know I'm taking away your lollipop. Emerging evidence indicates that impaired cellular energy metabolism is a defining characteristic of nearly all cancers regardless of cellular or tissue origin. So what we mean is that, yes, we have nice, neat things in oncology they talk about. You have this cancer, sarcoma, melanoma, carcinoma, ba 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 but the reality is it's all the same show. Just it manifests in different parts of the body and at different rates, different ratios. And you have melanomas, which are sort of weird guys, you know. 
Melanomas are like the crazy guy in the cancer family. <laughs> That's the one that runs around like a mashug, going completely nuts. So here he is. So you want to know how to spell somebody's name? There it is, on the board for you. Thomas Seifry. They're trying to get rid of this guy all of the time. He used to be at Yale, he's Boston College. He has his tenure up there. Any doctor on the planet Earth that deals with patients is going to see cancer patients. If you're going to see cancer patients, if you haven't read cancer is a metabolic disease, you are not a good doctor. This is the definitive book in the history of cancer on cancer, written by Thomas Seifrey. We go back once again to what we all love. But again, in this group and around the world, you would not just eat normal potato chips, you would get organic potato chips. <laughs> so now you're spending more money to give yourself cancer, right? Well, at least you can die with class. <laughs> On the tombstone, they can say, spend a lot to die. <laughs> Swedish renowned Karolinska. We love Karolinska. They do great studies over there, right in Stockholm, where we'll be next month speaking. Discovered and published the initial findings on how cooking morphs the chemistry of plants, making a cancer-causing compound. You know, when the Swedes came out with it, the entire chorus of the scientific community condemned them. Oi, they must have made a mistake. They must have made a mistake. Then other people started to do the studies and said, oh, no, it's not a mistake. By the way, they're right. And here's the other things we can tell you. Researchers at Harvard School of Public Health, where I lectured five years ago, have found an increased risk of ovarian and endometrial cancer among non-smoking postmenopausal women who consume food and beverage containing high levels of acrylamides. A natural occurring chemical found in grains, potato chips, pretzels, and other compound baked and snack foods. Acrylamides are produced during the heating of these foods. So now when you go down to the big health food markets, you go down the aisle with nothing but pretzels and potato chips and organic corn chips, you better walk fast. <laughs> because you're in the health store to prevent cancer, and you're in the aisle that will give you cancer. Isn't that a something? Now how come the health store doesn't know that? Health stores in the business is selling you health food, not selling you health. Remember that. I never went to a store I bought health ever. You ever find a store that can feed, give you health? I want health. I can't do it. I want health. Come on, I'm paying a lot of money. Can't do it. Nobody can give you health except who? Ah, you. <laughs> now you got it. You're the only one that can give you health. How about this one, a Dutch study. I love the Dutch. I go over there, they're riding bikes, and the, it's raining, it's cold, they're riding bikes. We're having a hard time walking, they're riding bikes. They look at 120,000 people, half of whom were women. How do you like that? Just like the population. You have one-tenth the say, and you're half the population. Matter of fact, you're more than half. There's more girls being born today than men. The first time in known history because of hormones. With that said, they found that women absorb more acrylamides, were twice as likely to develop ovarian and womb cancer as those ingesting a small amount. So you want two times more womb, two times more ovarian cancer, eat all of these organic cooked foods. The higher amount eaten by a woman involved was the equivalent to a single pack of crisp. I never ate a single pack of anything. Did you? How about I used to get the family size and sometimes eat two a day? Because <laughs> I was the size of two families at that point. Half a pack of biscuits or a portion of chips a day. You know what a portion, you ever look at the side of these, they're like a joke. The size of a chip thing. You know, the chip bag is this big. They said, this is enough for five people. What five people? Small people? Elves? <laughs> Nobody does that. You know, you eat the entire thing. You say, oh, that's not enough. I'm, I'm not filled up. You know, have to have more. Organic plant food is equal subject to the acrylamide effect. Don't say it's organic, it doesn't. The same thing, you're paying more for the same disease. 